Do not attempt any of these mine explorations. Mines are unstable and can be very dangerous. This video is for educational purposes only, and we do not assume any responsibility of injury. Therefore, we will not provide the location of these mines. Just sit back and enjoy. Hello everyone, welcome to another adventure with Brother B Videos as we explore the mines of Pine Canyon. These mines were not easily accessible and required a lot of steep hiking, rope and rock climbing, bushwhacking, and of course, a whole lot of patience. We'll be exploring four of these forgotten mines, so sit back, relax, and let's begin our journey. The Summit Mine, 10 feet deep. This is just a typical exploratory mine dug out by miners back in the late 1800s who were looking for gold or silver. Uh, we'll learn more about them later. But it doesn't seem they found very much since they didn't continue digging any further. But for the most part, it's a very nice, cozy living space. As long as you don't mine all the spiders that live inside. I'm Spider-Man. The Unreal Mine, 40 feet deep. This is actually a really special mine because when we first spotted the mine, it looked like this. At first, we didn't think it was a real mine, but upon further inspection, we noticed that it went back quite a bit. But there was one challenge. How was I ever going to get inside that to measure it? And after a short break, Gonna keep on after two hours of digging, I had finally cleared enough space to crawl inside, so I ventured in. Now this exploratory mine doesn't have an official name. In fact, it's not listed on any map, nor trail guide, and there are no references made that it was even in existence here. We simply stumbled across it. Well, it definitely stinks in here. Oh. Let's go farther down. I'm actually crawling. Still. Okay. Now I'm on my knees, and now I'm crouched down. Ooh. <clears throat> All right, here's the end. It was a short trip. Now, we weren't the first ones to rediscover this mine. Um, there were several old beer cans inside, so someone had definitely been here within the last few years. But uh, beside that, there was nothing else much of interest inside except for a whole bunch of spiders and several mice nests. And here's a shot from the inside of the mine. But I also wanted to give you a perspective of the amount of crawl space that I gave myself. Now compared to most mines, or actually most difficult mines I've entered, I actually have a lot more room to crawl into this one. And I used to be <laughs> claustrophobic until I started exploring these mines. Uh, thankfully I've broken that habit. And that is actually a root. I did my best not to not to cut it. Now as you can see, I did buy a measuring tape. I wanted to be as accurate as possible when I measured these mines. Now I'm actually in there for a while taking measurements and looking around and whatnot, so 
We'll just skip to the end of me crawling back out. Alrighty. <laughs> so. That was totally fun. Alright, so 40 feet. Let's get out of here. The carry mine. This took us the longest and several exhausting trips to locate. It measures at 69 feet and the entrance has almost been completely filled in due to all the landslides. The way I entered was to climb up and slide down into the mine. I figure in a few years it'll be completely covered up. Now you'll notice all those little items inside. Well, I'll get back to that in a minute. Uh, right now, let me give you a little bit of the uh, background history of this mine. It is known as the Carey Mine. It was owned by Eugene Carson and Jesse Dickey in the 1890s. They also own the Pine Tree Mine, which is to the east of Cary, and the Edith Mine, which is to the west. Unfortunately, those two mines have since been buried and lost, and any efforts to locate them were unsuccessful. But Eugene and Jesse also own the Summit Mine, the mine at the beginning of my video, and the Surprise Mine, which is what I'll be featuring next. On June 12, 1894, they, along with several other entrepreneurs, formed the Loris Gold Mining Company as they developed gold mining claims in Pine Canyon. That exploratory mine at the beginning of the video could possibly be one of the many mines they staked in this canyon. But the company didn't last that long because by September 1895, only a year and three months after they incorporated, the mines were abandoned. So this is the end of the mine. And here's a look from the inside. And from here you can see that there's one cave-in and there's the other cave-in. Quite dangerous. Anywho, back to the cool items. So, the story goes that during World War II, between 1939 and 1945, a man escaped to these mountains to avoid the draft, which really doesn't seem that far-fetched. He eventually found this mine and began to live here. For quite some time, it seems, he had miniature stoves and pots and pans for cooking his food. Uh, one can only imagine what he ate up here. Uh, there was a 55-gallon drum he probably used to store water. He even put a door at the front of the entrance of the mine so people could have something to knock on when they came to visit. And it's really likely he brought a lot of these items from the abandoned Echo Mountain House Hotel. But that's where the story ends. No one knows what happened to him or who he really was. His legend just simply faded away. The Surprise Mine. This is the longest mine in Pine Canyon, measuring at a total distance of 475 feet. There's a fork or a split in the mine, so let's check out the left side first. This is a fairly dry mine. There are a few areas where water has collected, but not much. Right here, the mine curves to the right. And now I'll be walking another 38 feet until I get to, to the end of this section of the mine. And this is the end of this section. And this little guy was watching me record. But let's go back to the split. And this time we're going to continue walking straight. We originally came to this mine back in December, and it was a very cold day that day, but inside the mine it was actually nice and warm, but it was also very foggy inside the mine that um, it actually fogged up my lens and I, I couldn't record, I couldn't take any pictures, and we could barely see. 
it fogged up the lens so bad that um, it was at least an hour or two before it went back to normal. So we decided to come back here in May and look, it's perfectly clear. So it was a good day to, uh, to record. Here are some wood beams. They didn't feel very sturdy anymore. They felt more soft and squishy. And the one on the floor was even worse. But it seems um, they just deteriorate quickly in, in these mines. To the right, here's another excavation dig that goes in about 27 feet. And now we're on the home stretch, another 100 more feet, and we'll reach the end of the mine. Oh, and this is the highest part of the mine. I think they're me cause a cave in. And this is the end of the mine. We were very happy to be able to come back and refilm this mine and made the video just that much more complete. And well, thank you for joining me. It's always a pleasure to bring these videos to you and I truly appreciate all of your feedback. I hope you enjoyed exploring and learning the history of these mines. And remember, whenever you go on a hike or on an adventure, always take a buddy. Well, thanks for watching, and until next time, see ya!